play to the end. It's beautiful. The marking place, if you take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Michael and Mallory, good job. Thank you for leading us. Wow. I just felt like something good was about to happen. <laughs> Richard and I have been singing that song for a couple of years now. I just feel like something good. I was, uh, I was flipping through the channels last night, late for me, trying to work on my message. I had been in Houston all day for a, a meeting and I'm, I'm usually never, at, at 9 o'clock at night on a Saturday, I'm usually long prepared by then. And so uh, every once in a blue moon, I have to uh, kind of break my normal routine. And so last night I was uh, flipping through the channels, taking a break between point two and point three, and came across uh, um, uh, Bill Gaither. And uh, although... It was awesome. God just filled that place with uh, God filled that bedroom where I was working with His presence. It was good. It was good. Darcyl and I are petitioning Bill Gaither, asking him to put a rapper in that video the next time. Right, Darcyl? <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. Darcyl, thank you for letting me share that. I love you. Hey, you know. There's a place for all that music as long as lives are being touched and we're not watering down the message. And just, just because it's not our cup of tea doesn't mean that someone can't come to know Jesus as a result of one of those artists. And i got to tell you, um, there's something special about Vestal Goodman. Goodman. Or Vestal, what's her last name? Yeah. And I just love, I love hearing those saints of God proclaim the timeless truth that God's still on the throne and nothing is too difficult for him. That's the God that we serve, amen? Hallelujah. That's why we're here today. We've been nicked, bruised, misshapen during the last week or so, but we come in here and God brings healing to all the situations of our lives. Oh, what a mighty God we serve, amen? Amen, no doubt about it. I felt like I'd been to church, and uh, it makes it so much better to deliver a brief message in the time that I have um, after a time of worship and praise like that. Wow. It really opens up things for us. And I'm not going to have you stand in your heart. I'd like for you to stand as we revere God's Word. Mark chapter 4, starting with verse 35. And I'll read through verse 41. Another neat of vision, another neat version of Jesus calming the storm. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. So basically at this point, Jesus is in the boat with his disciples. And at that point, a furious squall, very interesting language there, a furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern Sleeping on a cushion gives us a great picture of the humanity of Jesus. He had just ministered his socks off and in his humanness needed a rest. Have you ever needed a rest before? Say amen. amen. And so Jesus is asleep in the stern, lying on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up. He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And 
those words right there eventually are going to be some fun in the message today. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, now the storm had already been dealt with. <laughs> and then Jesus speaks. Jesus had come through again. And Jesus speaks. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith in light of how many times I've come through for you? And no matter how many miracles you've seen, do you still have no faith? They were terrified. And asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey. Father, would you add your blessing to the reading of your word, and not only anoint me as I deliver your message, but anoint our ears so that everyone would have their needs met today, that those who need to be encouraged would be encouraged, that those who need to be convicted would be convicted, that those who need to be inspired would be inspired. That's the beauty of your word. 200 people listening heard 400 different ways, and you're good to us. We love you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Look there at verse 35. Jesus said, now that's an important part of this, this, this verse. Jesus said. Say those two words with me. Jesus said. Let us go over to the other side. Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. Jesus knew. Look it up, do some research, and I'll tell you that all the same. Jesus knew. Yes, he was taking a little nap because he needed a little nap. But Jesus knew. <coughs> He knew that a furious squall was about to come up. He knew it. He deliberately took his fellas into a storm. He knew it was coming. He said, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. He deliberately directed his disciples into the sea because a few spiritual lessons needed to be learned. Amen. I keep going back to Hebrews where it says God disciplines those that He loves. That God loves us enough to get our attention. That God loves us enough to deliberately take us into a furious squall so that we might embrace a little spiritual growth and learn a lesson and become the people that God wants us to be. Truthfully speaking, our Lord, that, that Lord that we are yoked to, often leads us right smack dab into the eye of the storm, hoping that we might embrace a lesson that he has for us. I know this to be true at the ripe old age of 47. I've not learned much when things were going well, but I've learned a lot when things were not going so well. And I was reminded how great my God is, and I was taught important lessons that bring about spiritual maturity. If you want to keep growing up in the things of the Lord, just say amen. 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 As, I've, as I've crossed over my own sea from time to time in the midst of furious squalls, I've learned that the supernatural ways of God are not our ways. Have you ever seen God show up and show out and show off in a supernatural way and remind you that He had things well under control? That's how our God rolls. And I got news for all of us this morning. He's still on the throne. Amen? Amen. The supernatural ways of God are not our ways. When God places us 
in the middle of a storm, when God deliberately takes us into a furious squall, that's exactly where he wants us to be because he wants us to learn a lesson and to grow up a little bit spiritually and bring on the fruit of the Spirit where people know that is unequivocally a follower of Jesus Christ. That's the life I want. How about you? In these days, has Jesus deliberately directed you to the other side of the sea, knowing full well that a furious squall was right around the corner? And if he has, good for you. God's about to show up, show out, and show off, and remind the devil who's boss, and bring into our lives spiritual growth that cannot be attained any other way. Aren't you glad that God loves us enough this morning to discipline and direct those whom he loves? Say amen. amen. When, when companies first began to manufacture golf balls, I find this so interesting. I know very little about golf and even less about golf balls. But when manufacturers first began to manufacture golf balls, the cover of that ball was very smooth. Say that with me. It was very smooth. One more time. It was very smooth. However, they discovered soon after that that the golf ball would travel a farther distance once that ball had been roughed up a bit. So manufacturers began to place dimples on the balls. So it is with life. It takes some rough spots. It takes uh, some dimples. It takes a, a few scars to help us travel a little farther, to get to the place where God wants us to be. You know, any of us can quit and give up when the going gets tough and furious squalls come our way. But i got to tell you, I want to go the distance. I want to get to the place where God wants me to be. I want to embrace the scars and the roughed up spots and my dimples so that I can be valuable to God, used by Him, that when difficult times come, I can speak into the life of people saying, I've been there, God's come through, warts and all, our God loves us, I want to go the distance, how about you? Say amen. amen. I would say embrace your dimples today. Turn to the person to your left or right and say, yo, embrace your dimples. The last time I checked, God has plans for us, plans to prosper us, to give us a what? A hope and a future. Hallelujah. Glory to His name. As I as I prayed about this, and as I, 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 I dug deep into the Word trying to paint a picture of what this looks like, I've discovered that the Bible mentions three different types of storms that God deliberately takes us through in order to help us be the people that He wants us to be. The first is storms of correction that awaken us and get our attention. Secondly, storms of perfection that build our character and deepen our faith and make us more sensitive to the suffering of others. I've been through a few storms of perfection as of late and God is tweaking my character and deepening my faith and making me more sensitive to the hurt of others because of the storm that God is teaching me 
great lessons through, I find myself, Richard, not so inclined lately to blow people's problems off, knowing that, man, all of us go through difficult times, and that God wants us all to go the distance, and the least I can do for you, and the least you can do for me, is get in the game and work these things out together, amen? Storms of correction, storms of perfection, and storms of reproduction. Now, I thought long and hard about the storm of reproduction thing, and it's interesting that, that God takes us through these furious squalls so that we can learn how to appropriately deal with difficult things so that people will want to emulate the way we deal with difficult times. What great honor God gets when we deal with difficult times in a faith-based way, knowing that it brings attention, wow, Christy is dealing with this in such a phenomenal, obedient, faith-based way, and if she can do it, I want to reproduce how she's doing it so that I can give honor and glory to God. Storms of reproduction. I think at times we miss out on being a great blessing to one another. As we make our way through storms, other people want to see how we are handling it and that we're embracing our dimples and that we're reminding ourselves that we can go the distance as long as God is on the throne. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you in the midst of a furious squall right now? Embrace correction. God loves you. Embrace perfection. God loves you. Embrace the correct response to your storm because God loves you enough to help you be a blessing in the life of so-and-so who's going through a difficult Themselves. Aren't you glad for the church this morning? Say amen. 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 James chapter 1 verse 2 absolutely intrigues me. It's so elementary, it's frightening. I giggle when I read it. I giggled last night in the midst of Vestal Goodman, or Goodwin. I giggled because this song was on, a great hymn of the church, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Is that right? And so I got this hymn going on. I've got this verse going on. Whenever you face trials, say it with me. Whenever you face trials, that's what James 1 2 says. It says, say it with me. Whenever you face trials, it does not say if you face trials. I don't see no if in there, do you? It says, whenever you face trials, it does not say if you face trials. Count on it. We will face trials. Count on it. Not because, not because we've done something wrong or God's trying to punish us, but you will face trials so that you can be corrected so I can be corrected. So you can be perfected so I can be perfected. So that you can, you, your response can be reproduced and so that my response can be reproduced. Whenever you face trials, count on it. You will face trials. Say, say it with me. Count on it. One more time. Count on it. As a matter of fact, most of us, if not all of us, are dealing with some type of a furious squall right now. And if you're not right now, you might be tomorrow. Count on it whenever you face trials. But it's in those times when the storm rages fiercely that God's Holy Spirit comes and reminds us that we serve a faithful, loving, and supernatural God. And that God does not do things our way. And nothing is too difficult for Him. And though Satan may buffet, though trials may come, let this blessed assurance unfold that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed His own blood for our soul. It is well with my soul. Should come, let this 
I'm not mean to help each other. <laughs> Is there anybody at all that can give testimony this morning with just an amen and a sweat? Amen. Amen. What I find bizarre is that in the beginning, God made man in his own image. And ever since then, God had, ever since then, man has been, man has been trying to recreate God in man's own image. And we need to quit it. We need to quit it. Quit it. Quit it. Our God is not our size, and he looks nothing like us. Our God cannot be thought of in natural terms. When we attempt to force God to fit into our image, we are left with a God who can never surprise us, never overwhelm us, and never rise above us. Starting today, let's all remember that our God is a supernatural God and not a natural God. And when we do, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, comes to life like never before. Let's read it together. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Can I get a testimony to that truth? God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Today, let's all go over to the other side. And when Jesus says go, let's just go. Amen. Amen. And I don't want to shortchange, I don't want to shortchange the second point because it's the best of all of them. So what I'm going to do is think on my feet. And we're going to move to point three and I'm going to work at point two some other time with some other message. Unless Daryl wants to stay until one o'clock or something. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 